Hey, what's up? This is Just Plain Nonsense. I'm Michael. And I'm Rob. And hey, we got Josh in the studio. Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey, so today we are going to talk about, the title is Reflections, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so Michael, tell us what we're going to talk about today. Uh, well, uh, before I go into that, I'd like to say that, you know, a lot of you guys from season one uh, have heard Jay Willie, and this, so this is the first time you actually get to see him talk instead of just hear him. Yeah, and season one is the audio only yeah, podcast. Yeah. And isn't he like beautiful? Look at yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you. Now that I brought that up. Oh yeah, I guess I should say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was wanting to do an episode on for, on reflecting on from where we, where we started at and to where we are at today. I feel like um, um, we've we've made a lot of changes, even though we've kept a lot of the core values and core content the same. Uh, we've noticed that our fan base is growing uh, pretty Which rapidly. Which is super exciting. Yes, it's it is. Very exciting. And thank you guys for that. Uh, so at this point, I feel like we we'll still have a little bit of nonsense in here, of course. But it's nice to take an episode where we reflect on things and life, the projects, what we're doing, and it g- gives you guys a chance to get to know us better and. You know that way we can establish this. You can't call it a, a this brand a family if we're not uh, if you don't know things about our past. That's you know? true. Otherwise, we're just you know people you just kind of watch from time to time. You guys are on the toilet, on the toilet, or <laughs> or whatnot. All right, so I felt this is a good segue into this episode. Uh, I had this little rant that I wanted to to kind of just out there to kind of guide us into why we're doing this episode and to connect you guys to this episode. Well, one thing we all have in common is that we're all, there's many things, but one of the big things is that we're all held here by time and this, this time holds into place memories that we've experienced throughout life, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And so in life, um, whether it be the good memories slash experiences or the bad versions of those, uh, when we choose to reflect on those, we understand why we why we do the things we do and why we think the way we think, mm-hmm. you know? And um, we're gonna do that in this episode. I feel like we should reflect on life, ourselves. This will also give people a better chance to understand us and okay. why we're weird. <laughs> what? And our reflection on others and experiences and encounters we've had. And um, I feel like that's the way to really understand ourselves and others to understand us and you know, really paint the picture of the direction of where we're trying to go with. The yeah, company. yeah, do it. So uh, what I wrote here in my note is, because you know, we're pretty freestyle, but I'll have like notes of things to help guide things along. So uh, all I wrote for segment one is life. <laughs> so uh, segment one is life. So right now, if anybody wants to go, we can uh, start off discussing like us reflecting on our lives. Like what brought us to this point where we're at right now? That's a really good question. Yeah. Because I haven't actually thought about it. I've never thought about it. Yeah. Right, not that I can think of. Like, what made you want to go into entertainment? What made you want to do a, a, a podcast or okay, media? Okay, so I, I guess I can start with that. That's a really, that that's a good question to get me started because I, you know, I like to talk about myself. So, um, time out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, I I don't know where it came from, but I absolutely love being the center of attention. I want I, all eyes on me all the time. I love it. Um, I like when uh, I say something funny and people laugh. I like when uh, I um, say something clever or smart and everybody's like, oh yeah, you know, I can like change people's perspective or their mind or whatever and actually have a, a fun, intelligent conversation with people. But I think I got into entertainment because I just like to make people laugh and I like to make people smile. Like that's my, that's my main uh the, I think the main reason why I got in, and I love, I really love being creative with other creative people. Yeah, and that's, I think that makes, that's what makes you perfect for this type of work. You right. know, I, I really ad, admire you know those personality traits because I'm the exact opposite. You know, a lot of people might think because I talk a lot and I'm all the place that I actually like to be the center of attention. But I, up until this point, you've kind of helped bring me out of that. But I was a hermit, so <laughs> uh, like I, I would rather I was the type of guy that would rather just research and go t- down the YouTube rabbit hole on a Friday night, you know, and not really be around a lot of people. I've started to grow, you know, reflecting on that, on that time of my life, I was very much antisocial, you know, and now right. I'm very much the opposite. 
through these experiences that you guys have helped bring me through. Well, what's interesting is that I only know you in the podcast, like, scenario because like I, I we our friendship started because of the podcast and that's what's amazing about this whole project that we're doing and the, the fact that just playing on this team that that's being grafted together in the family of people that are uh, viewing us is that our whole friendship is documented yeah like, like if you if you see like on the very first podcast which we were just trying to figure stuff out we were also trying to figure out each other that was literally literally not some stage thing the first time him and I had ever hung out. Yeah, the, he came over to my house for the first time ever to record a podcast. And pooped at your house for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Most that's, people won't do that. They that's won't, a big like, step. When they, yeah, that, when they go to somebody's sign. house, yeah, there's, there's like a level Science of trust. comfort, yeah. Um, but speaking of that, speaking of our first podcast, I just looked this up like as we were uh, getting started, and I wanted to tell you the first podcast that we posted was September 10th, 2017. Wow. So it's Great. been a little over two years. Um, and we took a long break too. We, we took a mm -hmm. bunch of long breaks because we are just now on podcast thirty three, and mm -hmm. we're supposed to do one a week. Mm -hmm. So we should be over over a hundred right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, and it's crazy because like we have um, so many projects and things we do because just play nonsense is our is our brand. It's where we have fun with you guys. It's where we try to engage you guys the most on a um, intimate discussion level, right? And right. but this brand is owned by our overall company, Triple Helix, as you guys who have been viewing us this whole time know, uh, that is our, uh, our writing, the way we express ourselves, the, uh, the other projects, the media stuff that's more serious, more like trying it's to... Still, it's fun and creative, but it's, it's a little bit, it's more professional. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely more professional. This Where is, just playing nonsense is silly and playful. This is slap happy and us being real. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, you, you get to see the real side of us because there's not a whole lot of editing. As you see, segment one, life. <laughs> segment two, self. You know, like we, right. we just kind of have notes, but we want to be as real with you guys as we can uh, because we feel like you guys aren't fools. You know, people know when you're being genuine. People know when you're trying to actually have a real interaction with people. And right. you cannot have that unless it's unscripted, you know. Yeah, yeah and then people react more, more better. More better. <laughs> more better. Hashtag writer. Yeah. Uh, people act, react better to that whenever you're genuine because they can, I think that isn't, that's something that's in like the human... DNA or whatever that you can actually like detect when people are not being genuine. Oh, yeah. and, and like, I want this place to be a safe haven where people can actually enjoy themselves. Like you had a bad day at work and your boss was being a total jerk or one of your coworkers. Well, you can come here and you can find an episode probably related to it, you know? Yeah. And, and to know that you're not alone in that thing that you're going through. Um, you know, all these episodes are so random ranging from serious with some joking in it to just straight up nonsense. Because that's how life is. It's that's a very good summation mm -hmm. of it. That's a really Thanks. good explanation of it. Yeah, and that, that this, so being that's how life is, you can go through all the episodes and be like, you know what? Yes, I have wanted to discuss the Mandela effect without with somebody. You know, I have wanted to discuss um, conspiracy theories with people that don't are not or a lot of people aren't comfortable with it. You know, right? Uh, I have wanted to discuss uh, ringtones. You know, the dumb, yeah, yeah, like, like just, everything from serious to like, or just the, the, the episodes like that that don't make any sense. Like, I yeah. just want to unload and listen to r r random people, real people talk about real things. And just because we have those moments in our life where we're just like, we've had too much caffeine, like me, every time I'm on an episode, and you just want to <laughs> talk. And so, so, <laughs> and then sometimes I do it, but where else do you see that anywhere in media? Where do you see people like just talk about, you know, the worst ice cream flavor ideas that could possibly exist? You know, these are things that people discuss is it my phone yeah discuss with, without any stress or pressure of you know and we and we try our best to keep serious stuff that is controversial that could divide us from each other but we do want to have serious stuff that we can all relate to you know um yeah we i mean we breach the like the, relationships from the male perspective or female perspective those right. are things we all relate to whether you agree or disagree it's not a controversial issue where we're attacking somebody or force feeding yeah. a stance and they're they're mm -hmm. just our opinions and our our views on things and if you disagree with it that's totally fine yeah absolutely and i i actually love talking to people who disagree with me uh, especially if they're not going to get emotional about it right because i'm not yeah that's actually that's the best way to grow yeah i mean yeah. It, if you know why you believe what you believe it helps you out so much more absolutely yeah. and hearing from other people you can either have the humility to listen to try and learn and challenge your own views and that's how you grow or you can cut them off and try and 
only tell them your own opinion. Right. And you're not going to grow and you're not going to become a better person. And they're right. not going to become a better person when people are acting like that. Right. And the, the I, whole, I love it when people disagree. The whole mm -hmm. purpose behind those discussions is supposed to be learning. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, they feel like those discussions are, uh, they're, they're like, I have to convince this person to believe like yeah. I do. Yeah. And that's not, that shouldn't be the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal should be present your information that you have and your views and then let them decide how they want to view it and if Absolutely. they want to change their mind or not. And that was yeah. a great... Uh, like segue into one thing I was wanting to mention real quick on this episode at some point, because we have a lot of different uh, viewers from apparently different parts of the world, little pockets yeah. we found and different backgrounds and beliefs. Now yeah, we just learned to check our analytics. Yeah. So <laughs> we've and, been looking at that kind of stuff. And on that note, I think this is a very important thing to say um, because it's kind of shows in our episodes. So whatever we believe is our beliefs, but that doesn't divide us or set, shouldn't put a wall between you guys and your beliefs. Right. Um, so from what we call season one, we were just regular podcast before we grew into a video podcast and with our YouTube channel and such. Um, I was a uh, agnostic, right? If you could say, uh, if that'd be the best way to phrase it. So uh, in the newer season, and this isn't a preaching thing. This isn't a church service. So if you guys are atheists and are uncomfortable with this, don't turn it off because I'm getting to a very valid point that relates to you guys. Uh, I became a Christian, right? And so in that, the way I view the world, the way I reflect on things, change it changed. So, uh, my and I think I owe it to you guys to explain that, that. That's why my personality changed somewhat from season one to season two. So you'll hear some cussing that he beeps out in season one, some, some little bit things that are, you know, in that realm that you won't see in season two, but the constant content still change, still stays the same, right? right? So, um, you know... Yeah, because uh, we still talk about the same topics and the same yeah, silliness, but yeah, we just Because the it. idea is I want to be able to be who I am, right? Um, a man who uh, loves people, right? And it just so happens I love God, right? But if you don't, I want you to know I love you. And I, so the reason why I made that statement is because I want you guys to, to see that um, as I grow as a person into whatever belief system I have, that I want us all to, I want to build a bridge there where we can show that it isn't a battering tool for people. You know, I want to see that as, as this changes, uh, this is also an explanation to my Christian viewers that, who I minister to, you know, that, um, which, and I'm going to get off that platform, that soapbox in a second, that I'm, that I have went to this direction, but I still want to relate and have fun with you people who don't believe the same, the same way that I do, you know? And, uh, uh, so that was more of an apology to the people from season one that listened to it and like, oh, wow, I had my kids listen to that and we view yeah. it this way, you know. I, I did have a, peop a couple of people tell me like, hey, I was letting my kid listen to that. And yeah. I was like, well. Yeah, and, and I want, yeah, and I'm I, sorry. <laughs> and all this was leading to the fact that we're for everybody as far as entertainment because entertainment, you see it's, it's polluting Hollywood where people are about a political agenda. They're trying to force feed their religious beliefs, their, their, their political beliefs on people. And that's an entertainment should be where people come together. It's that moment where we come together and we laugh and we enjoy, you know, Right. each other you know and, and that, so, that's the best way to bring people together is, yeah. is to have fun with everybody yeah um, finding well, common ground and starting from common ground yeah yeah and that's the thing like if we're talking about reflections one of the things that i think people could reflect on is that the media right now is trying to divide us so there's only two type of people there's either the left person or the right person oh the, you said the media right me now yeah. i thought you said the meteorite that's what i thought too no the, the, okay. the, I the media who is this meteorite the media right, <laughs> split the planet right now, now right. is trying to, uh, you know, establish that there's the left and there and there's the right. Yeah. And if you believe this one thing about that, then you also believe this other list of three hundred things. Oh, mm -hmm. that's and, a, oh, that's the worst. I and oh, that makes me so mad. It's the craziest thing where I'll tell somebody, you know, you know, I really like that the sky is blue, and they're like, "Why do you hate the ocean?" I'm like, "That's crazy." Yeah, you know, and it's yeah. just that completely mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. on the political spectrum or the religious spectrum. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you know, it's, God tells me to love people. And, and then somebody says, why do you hate people? I'm like, no, I just told you God tells me to love people. No, yeah. since you're a Christian, you hate people. And it's like, yeah. and what's going on? And that you was know? actually, and you're getting hit with the same yeah. thing that the bad version of what you are hits people with. So they, they return mm -hmm. fire instead of saying, you know what? Uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson once uh, painted a point, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't want to misquote, that it's, it's our responsibility to discuss ideas opinions, religious beliefs, political beliefs. Mm -hmm. So that way we don't create these echo chambers where they're dividing points to throw stones at each other. And so, uh, you know, like a good example is I have a, I have a cousin, right? And he's in politics. And I'm not going to paint a picture of sides, right? 
as far as favoring one or the other, but just to give a picture of how divided we are as, as a people, uh, especially in America, which is the nation this is filmed in, if you're overseas, <laughs> uh, he changed his political affiliation, right? And when he did so, people on both sides started attacking him. Mm -hmm. Now, when do we get to a point where you cannot ha change your mind on what you believe, mm -hmm. right? And whether you're liberal or conservative, rather you're Christian, Luciferian, atheist, agnostic, because there's a difference. Uh, we, Muslim, actually, we actually had a Luciferian on the show. Yeah, we mm -hmm. did. And, and he's a good friend of mine. And, and that's the point I try to make is that, you know, if you want the world to come together, you have to discuss your ideas respectfully. If, if I agree with what you say, then I do. If I don't, I don't. But that's, I shouldn't be so fearful of someone else's ideas. I believe mine because I've been, I've tried it, you know, I, I put it through the trial of, of, of fire, you know? And so I want people to actually uh, come together that are different so we don't have these walls between each other, you know? And I think that looking at my past, you know, I've changed my political views a, f a few times. I've changed my religious views a few times to get to where I'm at now. And I think that's great because now I, where I stand as I get older, I believe more and I have a reason for believing it. A lot of people believe in certain political or religious reasons out of fear, out of fear for death, out of fear for the unknown, out of fear for what could happen, what this party's gonna do to the other one. It's, it's like we're at civil war constantly in different aspects, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love the idea of, of people just being able to like relax, like relax, you know, it, it, it's, People should be able to have the freedom to think how they want, choose the, choose their ideas, and us love each other for it. You Absolutely. Know? Mm -hmm. And I hope that, like, you don't see a lot of this in media because this wouldn't be promoted by a lot of people, but, uh, you know, we should come together and start loving each other. If you think differently than I do, cool. It doesn't scare me, you know. And I, th I thought it was a, a kind of an appropriate rant that we just come into because that is a thing that divides even entertainment. Like, you'll see certain actors in them, whatever their political or religious beliefs are, whew, yeah, now, now you're out. so that's one of the things that really, really drives me nuts is a lot of people, their argument is, uh, if you believe this, then all these other things, you, you, it's, it's like black and white. If this, then none of this, you know, it's like, it can't be like, if you believe this, but you can also believe this and this and this, mm -hmm. like you can, you can believe that it's okay to like save babies, but also kill somebody that tries to break in your house. Like that's it's it's okay to like defend yourself but also believe that hey i should probably save these lives over here it's just because you have one belief does not be, does not mean that an, an, you have the opposite belief for anything and that else. would be a great segue to the episode that we'll, we'll do on um uh on our other series when we have planned for this year which is the whole labels why mm -hmm. they're good why they're dangerous yeah and how to miss how people misuse them right so like you know the thing is is that Viewing differently is that we're all flawed human beings that take craps roughly every eight hours if we have healthy bowel movements. We all get sticky armpits. We're all, none of us are perfect. None of us are pristine. And if you feel differently, and it's good that you're passionate. It's good that you care about that much. But don't take that passion and release the reins on it, lose control, and hurt people. You know, because I'm not going to convince, you know, we're, we're such close friends. And he, him, him and I have debated things throughout our friendship. And it only brought us closer. You know, it sh as it should, as it should. And that's what, that, what the founding fathers had in mind when we get when we have, you know, that those those come points of meeting, you know, so we, we avoid civil war, but we don't. It's like, oh, they're different than us. Let's throw a stone at it. Just same as racism. And it's all garbage. It's yeah, all. And here's the thing, though, like you need differences. Yeah. Like because mm -hmm. there are things that I'm not good at mm -hmm. that other people are good at. So mm -hmm. like I'm really good at like technology and I can like build a website and I can edit videos and I can do cool graphics, but I can't farm. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm going to stay alive, which I need a good amount of food to stay alive, yeah. uh, the <laughs> I need somebody to do that for me. That's their strength. And they, they may not be good at building websites, and yeah. that's what I can do. I know that's, like, real broad and, like, a super shallow definition of it, but, like, mm -hmm. you need different types of people to do different types of things, that's which is why yeah. a lot of times in a relationship, um, two people who have similar um, uh, mindsets and similar, like personalities don't really work out because you need, if they both have the same strengths, they're missing something in that little puzzle. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, I, I um, and I won't go too much on to it. I'll give him a chance because he wants to say something too on this. Uh, yeah. His whole like waveform here is pretty empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, you know, I don't want to over dominate the mic here, but that's just something I feel passionate about. Uh, and I'll end it on that, on this note before we move on to the more kind of fun stuff. And I'm also, trying not to dominate the mic also, you know, I'm letting him speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wordplay. Right here. So uh, I had a discussion the other day with uh, an inmate, right? So he's 
an inmate. I'm an officer, right? And I'm and, not. Uh, he was, uh, he's Muslim. I'm a Christian. Whenever we started getting discussion about beliefs, because I was stuck watching him all night, uh, he goes, oh, you don't want to talk to me, man. I'm this, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, actually, I do that. I want to know why you think the way you do, you know? And because that was no longer a wall between us, we actually had a great discussion. At the end of the conversation, he still felt the way that he did, and I still felt the way that I did. But, but we came together. You understood together each a, other better. A bond was formed, an understanding, and that if I think this way is better, then I want to slowly over time show him why. But wh how am I showing somebody my beliefs, and as we all should do on either side of things, show them my viewpoints and expect them to want to receive it whenever I'm ugly with how I do it. Like, why would I want to be a part of something ugly? Right. Yeah. So, and that's the big stigma with a lot of beliefs and systems and things. And when you reflect back on those, you find yourself at war or not at war based off how you presented it, how you gift wrapped it, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's a big lesson for us is we got to stop emotionally responding to things. That mm -hmm. was what I was going to say is emotion, yeah. the emotional response is what causes the, a lot of those before problems. We go, before we mm -hmm. go off that, go ahead. Is there anything you want to add on that? Well, I mean, as far as what you were just saying, I can bounce off of that. And uh, I mean, I know we normally try and stay away from politics, religion, but with this episode, I mean, all I can think about is the word, you know, yeah. and there's so many different things in the scriptures that talk about exactly what you just did, you know, and all this anger and hate and, you know, God hates this and down with these people and all that other stuff. It's like, that's not reflected in the Bible. Yeah. What the Bible says and second Timothy is to correct your opponents with gentleness, you know, and patiently endure evil and correct them with gentleness. I mean, it, it doesn't say anything about yeah, going yeah. out and attacking people and making sure everybody knows what you believe and that well, you're right. About to throw the stones of the immoral at the sexually immoral woman, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the, the aspect, and I think that it's a really good point you made is that, you know, Christians shouldn't act a certain way mm -hmm. and people shouldn't think a certain way about Christians. It's like going to a book club. Mm -hmm. and debating somebody over a book you've never read. Yeah. You know, I think it goes both ways. You know, you see a lot of people that, that will use the Bible to thumb people. Mm -hmm. And, and then not know what it says. And then not know what it says. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with religion well, that's in general. The only, like, that's the only reason that they would. Either they're ignoring what it says or they don't know what it says. Right. If they're thumping people with the Bible, it's one of those two. Yeah, and, I, and here's a great point I want to add on that before we, we close on that one, before we move on to the more personal stuff that's um, within the other, rest of the content, mm -hmm. uh, is... That, that this is the nature of man, not the nature of um, overall summed beliefs. So, you know, it's our nature to try to, because people just do that. You know, they, they want to use a religion, no matter what the religion is. I'm not picking on anybody or protecting anybody in particular. But what I'm saying is that people will use religion to get power over people because people want power. Mm -hmm. They'll use politics to get power over people. That's why certain people can't change their political affiliation. You know, we find ourselves in a situation where people want to use it to hold people under the rule. And that's why it has this horrible stigma. But if people realize that individuals for, you know, thousands of years have agreed with certain things and had these beliefs for a reason. So if you want to really, you know, bring to them what you think is good to them or just build relationships and stop these wars and these hates and these, these horrible issues, you need to actually go talk to them like you love them. And don't, don't like... You know, I disagree with a lot of the religious beliefs because I believe mine's the real one, which I should if I believe in it, you know. Right. Um, but the thing is, is that that doesn't change the fact that I love, uh, you know, people. I, I love talking to the Muslims. I love talking to the, the Hindus. I love talking to the Buddhists. I love talking to the, the atheists. I love talking to the people of the other political affiliation because I want to know why they think they do. And I want them to know, with, without talking in circles here, I want us all to, to come together and realize that you know, this is a great point to make this episode. Stop mm. using beliefs to attack people, no matter what mm. they are. Absolutely. You know, not, not all passions have to be a passion of war, you know. But mm. anyway, that was, my, that was my rant on that one. Uh, so we got like from, way off topic because yeah. I started talking about why I got yeah. into doing podcasts. <laughs> yeah. mm. We started talking about. <laughs> well, that's, that's just why not this for you. You know, right. we go into rants because it's just mm. something that a lot of people face. So I'm glad that we just kind of threw it out there. Um, so it is a big thing that people reflect on because it's a big impact on our, right. our society. Did we want to get back on track of the? Yes. So now, yeah, Josh, right. why, uh, <laughs> uh, why, why are you where you're at now with, uh, um, writing with the media and thing and writing yeah. and, and your aspect to it? And what do you do for Triple Helix, Triple and, Helix, just Helix and Just By Nonsense? Um, well, my big passion through my whole life has been storytelling. 
and I've never really had an outlet to do that, you know, and I've, I've jotted down notes from, I think probably the earliest was 14 when I was writing down just different notes of what I, no, it was probably, no I think I was earlier than that. I remember some, some nonsense that I was writing <laughs> down when I was a kid, you know, um, about stick people and, uh, I think it was called the Stick Man Wars is what I was, I was going to write a comic on. I was maybe 10 when I was going to do that. <laughs> but, uh, that makes for the, the illustration part super easy. Yeah, it's been on and off. And, you know, because there's times and more times in my life than not where I've just kind of gone with the flow and, you know, wherever the wind takes me is what I'm going to go. And it was only until recently, maybe about five years ago or so, my brother passed. And... Um, my life just kind of got flipped upside down and I started taking more control over where I was going to go instead of just going with the flow because he'd always been there to any time that I realized that he was one of those things that if I needed something, he was there. If I needed a break from all the stress, he'd come over or take me somewhere or whatever. And it was almost like he was taking care of me and I didn't know how to take care of myself, you know? And so, when he passed, I didn't have that support system anymore. And I had to start thinking about why I was doing the things that I was doing and was it leading towards what I've always wanted. And none of it was, like none of my life was. And so I started making small changes here and there and uh, you know, those small changes ended up in a divorce actually, um, and which was a big change. And others, you know, I'd changed jobs I started changing the way that I acted when I was at home. Um, and it's been pretty crazy over the last few years. And so now, because I've always been interested in storytelling and I've had so many ideas that I've written down, have binders of notes and notes at home. It's one of those things that I'm buckling down and doing now. And that's what I'm doing with Triple Helix is, you know, I'm being the main writer and I've been slacking a little bit lately. It was <laughs> taking on way too much from way too many different projects and right. then so overwhelmed I don't know which one to go with. And well, you have uh, a lot of value. You have a lot of skills. Yeah. So people want to jump on it and use it, which is yeah. understandable, you know. Right. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's basically what it is now is that I'm trying to take more control over my life and I've always been interested in telling stories, whatever medium it is, whether it's going to be through, you know, movies or books or comics or short stories. And I didn't ever like short stories growing up, but now I love writing them. You know, this is one of those things where it's like I had this little idea and I can get it on paper real quick. And there's some ideas that don't need an entire book. Yeah, you know? just like a little bit of a, yeah. just a quick enough story. There's a short story he told me. Yeah. I forget the particular title of it or what, what type it is, but it's like it was one sentence, but it summed everything up in one sentence. What was it? it was oh, the, they're called uh, flash fiction. Okay. Um, Ernest Hemingway, his, his was uh, for sale, baby shoes, never used. Dang. You know, that's kind of, it kind of tells the whole story. Oh, yeah, like it took yeah. me a second, but then I was like, yeah. like my heart just dropped once I realized yeah. what it was. I was like, oh, mm. and, that hurts. Uh, yeah, and a lot of the other flash fiction I've seen that are that short, it usually is based around death right. because that's the thing that can get people emotional like real quick. Yeah. Uh, but I, <laughs> I love that whole genre, like those... It was that one that I, I tried to get under 300 words that told a pretty good story. And, uh, you know, I enjoy that. I think we have that one on the website, right? What is it? Um, hiding in his closet. Yes. Yeah. That one. Oh, man. That one creeped me out so hard. I love your writing. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. So speaking of that, I know I've told you this. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned it to you a bunch of times, but I want to tell some people that are on the other side of that camera mm -hmm. thing there. So you have this, <laughs> you have this story, uh, Equality Through Enhancement. Mm -hmm. And up on the website right now, triplehelix.media, uh, go check it out. It's in our short story section. Hang on a second. I'm like echoing. Um, it's in our short stories section. And, uh, on Triple Helix. Yeah, on Triple Helix Media. And I, I love the story. And the only part one is up right now. Mm -hmm. And I want so bad to read the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, it's just, he's got to have some ends, time yeah. to write it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love your stories, you know. And, you, and that's, yeah. that's one where I feel like I could. I could bust it out if I just sit down and do it. You know? Yeah, just write each part of it. I, I should. And just, just for you as just a present. Just for me. <laughs> I love but, it so much. I've, like, I've always loved cyberpunk. Like, yeah. That is one of my favorite genres. But the things that you almost always see is 
graphic violence and graphic nudity and like right. all of it and there's and none of that in this at all there's no like pg-13 like futuristic cyberpunk stuff yeah because they know? want it to be like gory and yeah you know, violent. Well, based off what he what he just said which is perfect for this episode i want to take that to inspire you guys so he went through some hard times in his life and all of them led him back to this point where we're all together and so if we can reflect on what he just said uh one pain creates wisdom it does because wisdom is not like knowledge it's not information where you're taught how to think and taught what things are it's through experience and through time and so um with every as a writer the reason why i, I believe you know you can tell if i'm wrong or not but the reason why i believe you're such a skilled writer other than the skill set of it you know the practicing and stuff the reason why your content is so good is because you feel what you write and mm -hmm. so if i can inspire you guys to this because it, it inspired me is when you have things go on like that, write. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm dyslexic and I have a hard time. Um, I have a hard time reading certain things and writing, and it's very challenging for me to write. But I'm a writer, and he's helped me with that. Saying, well, if, if you write, uh, you know, if you write a, if you write something, you're a writer. You know, just get it out. And you know, you, if you guys ever feel like that, write, and you'll realize that all the experiences that you've went through have made you a bridge to someone else or you can be relatable. And as a writer, we hope that's what Triple Helix does in one aspect, and we hope that's what Just Play Nonsense does, is brings us all together where we can laugh at things that suck, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and come together and just like with his experience with his brother, that, that yeah, that sucked, it's horrible, you know, and I won't take away from that. But what good, but he decided to take something good from it to realize that I need to not just go with the flow. I need to go do something with this. And, you know, we can be destroyed by the things when we reflect on our lives, the, the, the trouble and, and the hardships, or we could take it and use it as a weapon against hard times for other people. And mm. writing is a great aspect. And you should really check out his writing. I'm going to go ahead and promote him here because you are one of the greatest writers ever, like completely underrated because you don't have publicity and you don't have a mm. history of writing books. But I believe when you get out there, you're going to go far. Because yeah. you're right, your writing style, the way you can move dialogue and, and make people, like you showed us that one day, and even telling us that you can actually put information in a story and have us read it and us not know it's there and then it hit us, hit our subconscious and then show up later. Mm -hmm. Like it was just phenomenal. Like you were such, a, you were way beyond like on a skill level than what you, where you're at professionally with like it. Like when I described an entire forest but hit it and then I was like, no, I already described it. And, yeah, like, and I was what? like, no, you didn't. And I went back like, and like, look at this right here. And like, like yeah. writing is a skill, man. It, it really is. And uh, I've so, actually taken a lot of from your writing into mm -hmm. my own. Your the way that you write dialogue, mm -hmm. um, it flows so well that uh, you don't feel like you're reading. It's like all the, it's just kind of just coming in mm -hmm. as input, but you you don't feel like you're reading. You, it's kind of like it's so easy to read and it flows well, so well. I've always when I'm reading, I hate dialogue tags. I like he said, I, the he said, and then she said, and he said. You know, right. And so I've always. That's always she been said. one thing that I've tried to change up a little bit where it's not always that, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I love that about your writing yeah. because it's, it'll, somebody can say something and then they'll do something right mm -hmm. afterwards and you know that that person said it. Mm -hmm. And just, it just flows. <laughs> it flows. What is this? Every episode, I kind of discreetly, we, we kind of went along with Discreetly. You were, saying, you were very discreet right yeah. now. Well, you know how you, you hide stuff in writing every episode? I try to bring something mm. on the table as a random prop to my yeah, that, signature That's thing. the most inconspicuous I've ever seen you. Yeah. Yeah, we're not sitting here watching him do it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, anyway, you know, on that note, is that you guys should, we, we don't have a whole lot up there yet, uh, but it, so we're you, you, you guys can kind of engage in what we're talking about. Uh, he's going to release a lot more of it soon in the future, but if you go on triplehelix.media, uh, we kind of give a lot of our short stories, poems, um, parables, things like that, we're going to be uploading more of, so that you guys can kind of see what we're talking about, so you're not on the outside watching us talk about his writing, because right. it's, it's a major aspect of what we do. We're a half a chapter away from finishing a book we've been working on for two years, but I cannot wait to plug that, and mm -hmm. then have you guys come back and comment and tell us what you think. Um, yeah, I'll, I will say that uh, there was one point when one of the chapters I was writing that I, I couldn't finish it that night because I was crying, because I had to stop writing, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had to... I had to kill off one of the characters. Yeah, it made me, made me super sad. Yeah, there's another uh, a book that I'm writing outside of Triple Helix with a different group. Right. And, uh, you know, you really get a feel for the characters. And I was you writing... attached to them. I was writing the last chapter. And, uh, you know, I was bawling for like an hour while I was writing it. 
and then the other guy, um, he's actually been on the show before, Creepy Kyle. Yeah. You know, he doesn't really show emotion much. And, you know, he stopped reading for a minute and, like, kind of discreetly tried to, like... <laughs> Hide a tear. Yeah. You know, and he was like, you know, he's he's really upset right now. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's, like, seeing him break down. I was like, I wrote it exactly how I meant to. Right. You know, so... By the way, uh, he made my freaking daughter's day. He made a mystery box, right? Yeah, those things are cool. Yeah. And I, I, I need to send it to him, but I recorded it, the reaction. Hey, Faithful. You. Me? Yeah, what do you think? I brought oh, okay. the baby girl. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. sweet. The baby girl, yeah. I was like, wow, this is kind of, I'm not used to him, mm -hmm. like, doing, you know, something like that. I mean, he's always a great friend. I'm not saying he's not. I'm, I'm saying, like, I'm not used to, like, that. Like, that was very thoughtful. I didn't do that for him and his kids. It, What's a mystery box? It inspired me. He put a bunch of stuff together in a box, and he like took the time of like taping over different colored tapes and, and marking mm -hmm. it with stuff. And they opened. There's a bunch of toys in there, and like mm -hmm. he didn't hold back with with the stuff he he got. It was awesome. And yeah, it wasn't like a bunch of dollar store toys. It yeah. was like all legit toys and board games. And you, you know, and it's yeah, like man, cool. like what a good friend. And like how how awesome would be if more often we do that. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that, it wasn't just he didn't just go to like when I buy my friends gifts. You know, as you've seen, I just go to Walmart and I'll buy what I think they like, you know, whatever, based off what he tells me or whatever. Yeah, like when and, I bought you yeah. like four cat t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> but like to go through that much effort, you yeah. know, that, that was pretty cool. And yeah, I, and it was handmade too, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That, that taught yeah, me a lot awesome. about, you know, it, it made me like reflect on that moment and go, wow, I need to start doing stuff like that because it means mm -hmm. a whole lot to people, you know? Right. Yeah. But yeah. Because that's the thing is like big moments like that we can, you know, just take for granted. But if we take time to think about what we're thinking about and why we think about those things. You know, it, it helps you grow as a person. Yeah, and you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. Because even us, our smallest moments sometimes are the biggest ones in yeah. our memories, you know? Mm. Like like the first time I held my wife's hand, you know? Right. Like, it's it's, it's those Ooh, little things. I have, I have an example of that. So, uh, I was thinking about this. You held my wife's hand? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever touched your wife's hand. That's good. Um... <laughs> Maybe when she's handed me something, but mm -hmm. um, so I've shook your wife's hand. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. That is a loud vehicle. Hang on. How far are we running in this episode? Uh, we're forty-one minutes, but we have about uh, seven before we started. So we're thirty-three minutes in, thirty-four minutes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so. Uh, I was thinking about this yesterday or the day before um, when I, I went into the hospital one time because I broke my arm. I think it was when I broke my arm. And for some reason, I don't remember anything about that whole entire hospital visit except for the fact that my dad got me this little tiny stuffed animal, this little teddy bear with a balloon that said get well soon on it. Yeah. So you mean perfect example. And I was like, th I was thinking about it several years ago and I just broke down crying just thinking about what it meant to me and like the fact that he took the time out to go get something to bring to me. To show me that, like, just a little trinket. I wish I still had it, man. Like, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, I wish I still had that thing. Okay, so I love how you guys get to see our nakedness, like, our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, welling up right here. You know, it's <laughs> crazy is when I first met Rob, I was very much on keeping all of these reflections with, based on reflections. It's like a ripple effect. I did not share my emotions with my wife, which could have led to a divorce at some yep. point, you know. Uh, with my friends, with anybody. If I felt so way, I just kind of kept it in. Remember, I was a hermit, hermit as I explained earlier. Um, I didn't like to burden people with my problems, with how I felt, uh, unless I was lashing out in anger because it built up. Uh, I didn't, I never, I never told somebody if I was sad. That, that's for dang sure. I felt like my exterior was too tough. I didn't <laughs> tell somebody, you know, the deeper things of my thoughts. I just, usually I would cut ties with people and then go a different direction, you know? Right. Um, but, I, but after meeting you, you know, you taught me that, uh, and it's kind of cool that now I realize that and I see a lot, you know, with me in a military setting, with me working at a prison setting now, a lot of people think that it's a weakness to to look on that, reflect on that and express like, hey, I'm sad. I'm going through something. People right. avoid it. Just and uh, it actually takes a lot of courage. It does. It, to me, to I think it's up. more manly to be like that hurt my feelings, you know, mm -hmm. or I'm angry, you know, and just say it. Don't don't passive aggressively act out. Just express yourself openly and you'll find out that takes more more strength than anything and it's more meaningful and you actually get the results you want so you don't like get bitter and angry yeah. mm -hmm. and communication is, is where it's at and hate comes so quickly yeah. like hate yeah. is a strong word you, everybody's heard that but you know I believe that that love is a stronger word like mm -hmm. it is so much harder to forgive somebody 
it takes so much more strength to love somebody than it does yeah. to maintain that love than it does because than to hate them because love is, is a bond right i can love cheesecake i can love the smell of that candle you know i could love the smell of gasoline i could love my wife you know i could love you guys and those and since it's a bond there's different variations of love you right. know and with with that bond, the, the lighter the bond, the easier to sever, and you have to strengthen that bond. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I feel that the only way to strengthen that bond is through honest, on like truly honest expression amongst each other. You know, like, you know, we had a discussion earlier, and Josh said something to you, I heard I was walking out, like, hey man, that hurt my feelings, you know, and there was, the, and, you, and we comforted each other. Right. I right. think that people don't know how to be in relationships, not just marriage, but in friendships, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and you look, my grandfather once said, if you have one true friend in your life, one that you can trust with your money, your girl, and your back, you're a truly looking person. Hold on to that friend, and mm-hmm. and, and it's true because you know there's very there's friends I have that I trust with one of those things or two of those things, and I know who those people are. And I was blessed enough that I have three, well, two because one just recently passed away, but I have three people overall I would say in my life that are friends outside of my marriage. You know, just friendships. So I'm truly blessed that mm-hmm. I trust with all three of those things, you know? Right. And it, it's, it's a, you know, it's good for all of us to reflect and think about those basic concepts within things we all share, like friendships, marriage. Right. Like but on the flip side of that, it sucks to think that there are people that you're friends with that you can't trust with some of those yeah. things. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little disappointing to think about it. I well, the bond it. gets stronger whenever you make yourself more vulnerable. That, that's right. absolutely right. Right. And I feel like, and this this is going to be just a little insight into me that I, of where I think is, I think that's why I have such strong re- friendships and relationships with people. Because I am like, um, I am open to a fault. Like sometimes I'm too open and people are like, all right, Rob, we don't need to know that. <laughs> well, you but know, I just, I like to share myself with people. That makes me feel good. Like I love being vulnerable and open and honest with people. And I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. I feel, I guess it's probably because I feel really, really close to people that way. Yeah, I've never liked it, and I still don't. So there we are. <laughs> well, and I, I, I think that might have something to do with um, the loss of my mom, mm. um, because I she was gone, and then I had my dad, who was pretty distant, because he was going went, through the, the mourning to, of his wife, right, right. Is, um, and he was always at work and stuff. And uh, I, I wonder if that I, might I be. I admire him for that. Yeah, he yeah. Man, he, oh, he, he went from he was like thirty three, thirty five, something like that, and he went from being married with two kids to like being a single father. So our age, our situation, and yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, and then all of a sudden she was gone. That's why I think it's so precious, man. We just thought we should... Right. You know. Oh, and real quick, I wanted to clarify, because in the in the Christmas episode, I think I talked about, I said my mom died, and then I was talking about how my mom was doing stuff. Yeah. So I... I after, you might think you're delusional. Like, yeah, <laughs> as I was editing that, I was like, you know, I probably need to clarify. So just real quick to clarify for you guys, um, my biological mom died. She went to the hospital when I was nine and died when I was 14. Um, my dad met a woman online in uh, like 18 hours away and uh, we moved up here they got married and now that's my stepmom but I call her like my mom we don't recognize the step in our family so anytime I, I say my mom it could get a little confusing but there's my biological mom and then my stepmom so that's who I was referring to when, whenever I'm talking about my mom doing things now oh, I get that, um, yeah. yeah so there's a little clarification for you yeah. yeah, you know, and, and, and I'm glad you did that because I, I heard that episode. and I thought that too. I'm like, I wonder if people are going to get confused and think that he's still like talking to his. You know, <laughs> no, that's, I, I definitely that's one thing. It. That's one thing that I absolutely love that you do because well, I have. It's not just stories and just th- different things. I write down ideas and uh, you know just stuff that I want to get across or stuff that I could put in a book later or in a sermon or something like that if I ever get around to preaching. You know, right. and one of the things that's really been heavy on my heart is. You know the distinguishing between stepfather and you know foster children and that right. kind of stuff because you know back to the religious views that's right now we're talking about reflections I reflect everything off the word and God doesn't make a distinction like when he, he chose the Israelites to be his people and in the New Testament he also gave salvation to the Gentiles you know who are the non-Israelites we grow into relationships yeah, yeah. But he never makes a distinction between his true children and his stepchildren or the, you know, the Israelite children and his Gentile children. We all became children. Right. And so and the people that are raising children that aren't biologically theirs, that don't share DNA like me, like I don't see, you know, one of my daughters as my daughter and the other one as not. 
-hmm. you know, they're both my daughters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, I run into the same situation where, you know, because I haven't told somebody else that they're my stepdaughter, you know, right. or a daughter through marriage, it's like, they come out with a little bit of confusion later on if something else comes out about, you know, her biological father. But I see her as my daughter. Right. And she goes back and forth between calling me by my name and calling me dad every now and then. And right. I absolutely love it when she calls me dad. And it's just, it's a weird balance to be like, hey, you can call me that anytime you want. You have, <laughs> to, you have to find that. And in, in everyone's home is different. Like, mm -hmm. in some, it, it, it's necessary to make distinction. Some, it's not. Like, you shouldn't, you know, I think mm -hmm. it, like, I grew up in uh, what I like to call a mixed family, right? Yeah, that's what it is. And so... A blended family. Yeah, a blended family. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, my stepmom was still my stepmom. Like, because my mom was my mom, you know. It was right. a different, different kind of relationship. But I had another friend whose mom wasn't in the picture, you know, at all. And his stepmom did, and he called her mom, and that's great. Mm -hmm. I, I think that really, in, in a, the beautiful part of the family is that we shouldn't have to, once again, back to the label thing, is that we should keep ourselves in, in a zone where whatever you and your family decide is what is, is where that level of bond is, mm -hmm. that's where it should be. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah, so um, we, uh, just to expand on that a little bit further, too, uh, and to go along with what you were saying is... Um, my my stepmom back when we were when we had first uh, got together and my my dad married her and then we were living together and it was trying to figure out you know trying to figure out where we all stood in that whole entire uh, structure really there was there was initially me my brother and my dad so there was three of us and then we moved in with them and it became there was eight of us so we were had we had this little structure that we were trying to like uh, figure out where we all fit. So it was a, power, a little bit of a power struggle between all the kids and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But my, I'm going to refer to her as my stepmom until I get up to the point where we started calling her mom. But she was, uh, she asked my dad at one point, she's like, when are they going to start calling me mom? Like not in front of us, but like he mentioned that to me like years later. But um, we eventually just started calling her mom. Like we were calling her by her name. Mm -hmm. For a while, my my biological says brother a lot and I, about her character in a good way. Yeah, and yeah, she asked. She's and like, she already when, wanted to embrace you. Right, she loved you that way. So, she was like, "When are they going to start calling me mom?" And then eventually, we started doing it. And I I don't I never saw her reaction, but I can, I can imagine that it like made her feel incredible whenever we started doing it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, her, she had four boys, and they eventually started calling my dad dad. So it was like we we didn't recognize the step, and it wasn't like a discussion that we had. It just happened. Yeah. Um, and now like my, my stepbrothers are my brothers. Like I will fight to the death for them. I love them. I care for them, whatever it takes hundred percent. I'm they're my brothers. Mm -hmm. And that's how I honestly feel about it. And, well, him and I had that same name so we could relate to that. Uh, you know, I, I grew up with Josh from a certain age, uh, up, you know, went to school together and like, I loved Chris too. Not like you did, you know, obviously mm -hmm. I'm not taking away from that. You need that's to, my brother you, that passed. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. going to say, you need to explain who Chris is. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. And so. But you and I were such close friends, and then um, we both experienced a lot of pain in our life that brought us to a point, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you and we both moved back to Illinois, and we yeah, ran into each other so at crazy. Walmart. Mm. Look at our friendship. <laughs> you you, guys, you, you just, lost a friend named Michael, who died. Yeah. I lost a friend named Rob th through death. Yeah. And then you and I came together in that same time period. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Right. And, uh, you know, I look at, I think that there's just such a power in friendship. There's such a, a necessity for it that, you know, you guys can say fate, right? I say God, but whoever, you, whatever you, however you want to look at this, you, you, we can all agree that there's just a power that brings us together in love. And I know that with uh, with our friendship, you and I established a point to where it's not a friendship; it's a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, and even with uh, with my cousin, who I'm very, 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 very close to, like I consider him a brother more than I do a cousin. I forget he's my cousin sometimes. Right. And then the other day he came up to me and he's like, he's like, hey man, you, our, our cousin was with us today, you know, because he really truly considers me a brother, truly loves me, truly loves Justin, you know, and so. And who's Justin? That's his cousin. That's my cousin. Okay. <laughs> I figured he's the one left over, you know. Uh, but we, we truly, it showed me in that moment that he really, really, you really see me as, as family, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, there's, there's just something about that kind of bond that isn't defined or has the limitation simply by a name. Some things transcend mm -hmm. blood or names. And Justin helped me out the other day, and I was really thankful, you know, asking him what I can do to help, you know, pay him back. And he's like, no, you're family now. I was like, that, <laughs> See what I mean? I was, yeah, that's big. And I 
my uh, my mm-hmm. kids call his mom Grandma Jen, and you know call him Uncle. So that's well, he's he's like uh, the same as me, but just a lot smarter, <laughs> better spoken. <laughs> but he, like, I love when it, people it, do that, like do stuff for people, and then they're mm-hmm. like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want anything. Yeah. I just want you. I just want you to have whatever it was that I gave you or did yeah. for you. Well, I made that statement not because I say I do great things for people, but I yeah. meant like no, because. No, I was building off what he said. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. But I, I just want to state like because like we both see the world in very similar ways, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's it's crazy because once again, a lot of us to this day we have completely different viewpoints on a lot of things. We have some strong totally similarities, fine. and it's totally fine. Mm-hmm. And you know that, that's why. I, because when we first started that, when I first started that rant, you can I, I can guarantee you because of our nature, people start Get looking, at me, looking at me, dissecting. Well, what is his beliefs? You know, mm-hmm. or what are the beliefs? Does it matter unless we're discussing it? What matters yeah. is is that the point of the whole message was not to to use some form of propaganda to emotionally bring you into a direction of mine, but to let you know that I have mine. Here's who I am, and you have yours, and I love you. you right. Mm-hmm. And, and to to summarize that, basically, just be yourself. Let people be themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, accept that people are different and stop being a jerk. Yeah, open yourself. It, 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 here's the thing: is people say people are, are real big about like don't sh- don't wear your emotions on your sleeve. You know, I keep completely disagree. With I disagree. That. Just like the whole saying, don't do friends and, friends and business or family business doesn't mix. I completely disagree. I, just because there's many variations of where it went in, wrong. In a couple of years, we'll see yeah. if that's a good idea. Or yeah. not. <laughs> look where we went. The, where we've come this far. Right. right. We've had yeah. disagreements. Oh yeah. We we got over it because we our bonds were strong. Them, yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. I think it's just it's. There's certain character, characteristic traits that just because you're family, it usually will be a bad idea. But that doesn't mean always. I, mm-hmm. I, I never want to limit people to the coming together to doing something, you know. Mm-hmm. But and one thing uh, I would say though, is a lot of people say don't loan anything to friends or family as far as money, and uh, I agree with that. Like if there's going to be a loan, you should go into it with the expectation that you're giving it to them. Right. Yeah. And if that other person wants to pay you back, they can. Yeah. But every time, like in the last few years that I'm like giving away money to friends or family or whatever, it's been a gift. And mm-hmm. if they pay me back, they pay me back. And if not, then they don't. Right. That's, and that's exactly what I do. Mm-hmm. Anytime somebody's like, hey, can I borrow some money? And I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess. And then at that at that point, when I finally decide like, I'm going to give it to them, mm-hmm. I'm like, it's, it doesn't matter if I don't see it again or not. Yeah. But I won't give you money if I can't. If I can't, if I don't need it, then mm-hmm. I, I won't. You yeah. know, that's like the smart way to handle your money. But yeah, I've seen you both mm-hmm. act on that. And, and you know, there's really it's, it's the hard times or the rough situations where somebody needs something from you that shows a lot about your character. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you, what is it? Uh, you the way you the way you treat people when they well, how's that saying go? The way you treat people when they need you shows a lot about your character or when you're when they're in the I don't remember. Never mind. So <laughs> don't worry about it. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. Is, I know what I'm trying to say, but I, can't. I feel like after I studying body say, language for a while, that. after studying body language for a while. I've gotten to realize that people tell you who they are better with their actions than they do their words. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. and, and to emphasize on that, uh, I could tell a lot about a person's personality without ever meeting them just by interacting with them in traffic. <laughs> like, so you have the people that, don't, that can't make a decision, right? And they're real incisive. So they're the ones at the stop sign, at the four stop, that, that, that keep waving you on and won't go. They, like, they when won't. it's their turn. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, or you have like someone who cuts you off in traffic and rides, or rides your tail, you know? Well, they, they probably don't plan ahead well enough and leave work on time, you know, or just that moment they might be going through an emergency. But overall, like you tell they're aggressive in nature, like they're not, you know, because you have someone who's really submissive in that situation or real passive and they still won't ride your tail. Well, they, they could be aggressive or oblivious because yeah. we, we have a friend who rides people's tails, but that's just because yeah. he doesn't pay attention to the fact that he's that close to somebody. Right. But you could start making uh, assessments off of people based off of um, based off of like how you interact with them before you even hear the words is what I'm trying to say. Is that not considered like judging people? Judging people is a good thing. Right. but Okay. So I I have to go on this rant real quick. Right. And I won't. (laughs) Okay. First of all, one thing I hear from people a lot is they say, don't judge. That is so impossible and not accurate, nor does the Bible say it either for my Christian friends. Um, Because because people might, might fan me on that one. Thing is, is it's what you judge and how you judge that could be wrong. So, and uh, so if I'm going to order food, I make a judgment when I look at the menu. What sounds good, what doesn't sound good, what might be gross. Uh, if I'm going to, to go into a situation that could be bad or good, I make a judgment, right? You, the, English lang- the English language is like, oh, judgment, assessment, these things. But, the, but the, what, what they are is that you're forming opinions based off your past experiences, and that allows you to judge. It is literally impossible not to judge. And, that is disar- and by people like saying that, that you don't judge, they've disarmed people's ability to defend themselves or the ones they love, or look at a situation 
um, not necessarily from people, but to defend from harmful things coming in your life. It is crucial to judge. Secularly, biblically, there's over 200 something verses on how we should judge, how we shouldn't judge is the problem. When we judge people to condemn them or mm-hmm. to harm them or, to, or to, to distance ourselves from people, then judgment's bad. Um, but judgment to, this, this would be better for, for, the, for, for the label kind of episode, but, but judgment overall is crucial to survival, but judge and love. Mm-hmm. Don't judge to put someone down. Right, and that's what I was getting at was like, I know that the way you were saying that yeah. stuff, somebody's going to be watching this being like, oh, he's yeah, talking about judging And I'm glad you said that I wanted to make the point. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, it is impossible not to judge. Impossible. But judge in love. Judge, judge respectfully. Judge, and judge every, fairly. Because you're judging the spirit of things. You're judging the, or if you don't believe in that, you're judging uh, the situation. You're making so an assessment. basically what, what I was getting at was uh, just because somebody's riding your tail doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Right. Yeah. Uh, there could be a bunch of other things. Yes. And just because yeah. somebody is uh, aggressive does not mean that they're terrible. Absolutely. So when I'm judging that situation, I'm making a judgment call, right, based off of what they're doing. And I could be right, not be right. But it's impossible mm-hmm. for my brain not to protect myself to make a situation. Should I hit my brakes? Should I speed up? Should I get over? Should I let them in? Mm-hmm. These are all judgment calls that we have to make. So like... Um, People won't respect people's judgments because they judge in hate or in, in a way that, that they only look at negative variables right. instead mm-hmm. of the positive variables as well. And that's so, uh, actually speaking of that, one of the things that uh, it's like a little saying that goes along with pe- like seeing people in traffic. It's people whenever somebody cuts you off or whatever, everybody, excuse me, everybody judges other people on their actions mm-hmm. where you judge yourself on your intentions. Mm-hmm. So since you very don't, good. since yeah, you don't know good. their intentions, you uh, and they're immediately a jerk. Mm-hmm. If they mm-hmm. stop in front of you, if they cut you off or whatever, very if good. they're riding on your tail, you're like, oh, that person's a jerk. You made yeah. that judgment based on their actions. Yeah, and I but think you that don't, maturity that comes from experience, like like an open mindedness to it, right. is that you'll let how you think determines all the, the options that you judge in, because like, mm-hmm. you, you'll attach that judgment as a link to how they might their intentions. You know, uh, so. I love that you said that, but yeah, that's so true, is that really, the the more open you are to thinking, the more loving you are, the better your judgments are going to be. Yeah. yeah, and one thing that I wanted to say, bouncing off of that, uh, that. you kind of hit on it a little bit, is that when you're making judgment calls or anything, you shouldn't be judging to condemn. Like, you said mm-hmm. that, and the one thing that you can judge is, like, an action. You know, mm-hmm. if someone murders somebody else, mm-hmm. you can say, that was bad. And I mean, or just simply that was murder. <laughs> it's, it's universally yeah, it's pretty a, much accepted, you know, murdering an innocent person, that's a bad thing, mm-hmm. you know, and it's okay to judge that action. But to say that person is a horrible person will never yeah. be redeemed. Now you're condemning them. That's okay. condemned. I like right? that the way that you yeah. made that distinction. I like and that. we're talking about reflections and trying to get people, you know, to reflect on who you are and what you do and why you do it. When you're doing that, don't judge and condemn yourself. Yeah, I wanted to make that point because there's a lot of times where you look back on your life and you stop looking back on your life because you've seen so many things that you've done wrong. I've done so many things wrong. Yeah, and so it's hard to look back and say, you know, I did that and that and that and that, and then condemn myself to a point where I don't have any hope for the future. But there's always hope for the future. I mean, right now we have, you know, it's right at the beginning of January, and so everybody's making these real resolutions and. You don't have to wait for the new year or any time to, for someone to say it's okay to change. Right. If there's something that you don't like, you can change it. And if there's something that you don't like, you don't have to dwell on it and hate yourself for it. And just know that everybody has made those types of mistakes and you do have the ability to change. Yes. Yeah. You even judge those things in your past and love. I love that. That was really, that was really good. That was very good. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of it is that, you know, you can look at life and we all look at life differently, right? So you can have like binoculars where you look far away into the future and we make these assumptions and these things that may or may not be accurate, whatever. Or you can look at life through a kaleidoscope where you, you don't face things for what they are. So you have this beautiful image that you put before yourself because you won't actually look at things for what they are. And because fear, yeah, fear stops you, you know. And you can put on a, a very convincing facade before, before yourself of who people are, what they do, because, you, um, because you're judging from what is put together in front of your eyes instead of you looking at things truly for what they are. You know, look, at things, look, look at things deep more deeply. That makes sense or was that a horrible metaphor? No, I, I actually, yeah. uh, I do the same thing with, where I, I feel like I look at things as they are. Yeah. Um, I try to look at things as objectively and unbiasedly mm-hmm. as possible, which there's like, you can only get so far removed mm-hmm. from yourself, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> I've made decisions on things that I know is going to affect me negatively just because I believe it's the right thing. 
Right. Um, and it, it's it's hard. It's a hard decision to make. But like, I'm like, this is the right thing to do, and this other person's going to benefit more than I will, so they deserve it. Like, if there was a promotion that was up at work, and I, it's like, say we were going to get like an extra thousand dollars a year or whatever, and it was between me and somebody else, and in my mind, like in my heart, I know that they are way more qualified and they would do a better job. I would I would step back and remove myself from it and be like, they deserve this. This is they would do a better job for whatever it is. But because you had love outwardly, not yeah. just for yourself, right? But for other people, the company, whatever you're serving, you're really a team player. That allows you to make that that judgment right, right in that moment. It allows you to, to make that decision because a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, I'm not saying the majority. I wouldn't say that. That'd be an assumption. But a lot of people, I'm sure, would just be mad because they didn't get it. Right. Because the love is so much more for themselves than it is for the person who may, you know. Right. And I I feel m- way more satisfied when I sacrifice myself for others. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like, oh, I'm a martyr, blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. it's like sometimes I love I love stepping back and just giving somebody else the chance to be as good or as best as they possibly can um, just to build them up. Because in in the whole grand scheme of like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like anytime I explain it, it's like in the whole grand scheme of the whole entire universe, what is morally right? Um, mm-hmm. What is the actual truth? Not not the way I see it or the way I perceive it. Yeah. What actually physically happened? Yeah, if I were to look at it, yeah. if I were to look at it from a completely outside perspective of somebody who doesn't have any stake in it at all, <laughs> what is the actual fact of what just happened? You know, another uh, there's <laughs> so many times in our life, and uh, you know, you guys will have your own individual stories with this, but I have, um, you know, made a improper judgment on somebody that I formed these opinions on them that were not right at all, or I thought that somebody cared for me that didn't, or somebody hated me that didn't, right. you know, just, be, you know, cause some people are hard to read, you know, uh, you know, I asked somebody a while back, I was like, why, why do you hate me so much? And that, and that particular person said, I don't, I was like, oh, well you act like you do. It's like, oh, so, no, I don't hate you. I just don't agree with you a lot. So it's hard for me to connect. I'm like, oh, okay. Well that's something that maybe I can do to change that. Now, if that would have been said like months ago, then yeah. you would have been like, yeah, yeah. I get it. Let's- exactly. But people don't bridge that gap because of what they see on the surface, right? Mm-hmm. you know, and usually there's for growth, there's always a way we both can. Two people can grow in the same situation or scenario or a different one. Um, I, I really like how an episode like this is kind of good for us. It's sort of refreshing. It allows us to, to little pout a little bit and, and kind of <laughs> instead of being put things on the, the table for you guys mm-hmm. to look at, which is you know having thousands of people look at your your life is kind of intimidating and the I, way you view I things. Love, but I love the thought of it. Just the thought that other people out there are going to be like, "Hey, this." There's only two people I'm speaking to. Are you guys, <laughs> are you recording this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be so funny if you were on here and you had no idea that there's a camera and a recording yeah. going like, why yeah. am I talking to this microphone with these headphones on? Oh, we're just playing, right? Yeah. This, this is the best tea this party is... I've ever been to. Where's the tea? Hmm. Oh, do you have tea? Hmm. No, you have, what was that, Bang? Not sponsored by Bang. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I feel like this is a good personal personal episode. If um, reflected on life, reflected on people, reflected on ourselves. We, mm-hmm. we covered the whole of that. Um, if you guys have nothing else to say, then I, I have a little a closing statement. Yeah, do it. Uh, so, um, um, I'm going to go ahead and reflect on JPN. So, everything that led to its takeoff, this is a little notes here. I'm going to fill in as we go. Um, why we did it. You get so excited whenever you talk about stuff, and I can't I turn you down anymore. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> If I turn you down, you're going to start being louder in our microphones than you are in your own. All right, ready? Let's start again. Ready? Go ahead. All right, so in this episode, uh, so I'm going to bring us to a close, right? In this episode, we reflected on ourselves, on others, on life, uh, the channel, uh, how we used to view things, how we view things now, why we do the channel, which I thought was important, um, our plans for the future, you know, that was real brief, but just to grow the, the brand, the company, the community, and I hope an episode like this that you know we might do once or twice a year where we just honest through the mics and a little less nonsense, a little bit more, you know. Reality. Rea- us showing us our deepest thoughts and, and feelings. Don't worry, we won't have these on every episode. We'll go back to the nonsense on the next episode. <laughs> uh, but it, I think it was, I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed us, you know, taking the towel off and being vulnerable to you guys, you know. Um, with this episode, my goal when I when I brought this to these guys was to really make an impression with you guys that we want to be honest with you guys, that we really want to tear down any walls that may be between us, the viewers or slash listeners, 
And then between you guys, amongst you guys, independently on the other side of the camera, uh, I want us to really help the world grow, become better. And that seems to be the opposite of what we see in, in everywhere in media that influences, you right. know, um, I want to get rid of, I want to empower us, not through victimhood, <laughs> but through unification, through the acceptance of each other. Even I'm not saying accept other people's beliefs as your own. <laughs> I'm saying accept the fact they don't believe the way you do and be an influence to them. If you think what you think is good, you yeah. know, do it in a helpful way. So I hope this episode kind of helped do that. Um, because it's, it's a big issue in, in society, and I feel like it's our responsibility as people that are reaching people to make that statement. And then, then, then we'll, we won't go back to political things, ever, you know, again, most likely, um, unless we can have fun with it right. without hurting people. Uh, we shared memories, experiences together, so I thought that was, that was awesome. Uh, so in my closing statement that I wrote... No, I'm trying to back that away from you because you're yeah. clipping no matter how much I turn it down. All right. Uh, so in the growth of the JPN family from, this is messing with my head. I'm just trying to pull it away okay. from you because it's literally clipping every right. single time you talk. All right, can I go? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So in the growth of the, of the JPN family, which is us, our co-team, and you guys, the viewers, um, special thanks to those who subscribe and uh, the Patreons especially. Um, you guys have watched us from episode one where we became friends and literally tried to do this thing to where we're at now, which is... You know, it's interesting that where we're at now. Right. Um, it's fun. Yeah, it is. So you get, so from that point to where we're at now, currently. Uh, sorry, I have a little bullet points notes here. And I wrote it in a weird way. Uh, from from where we were with the, with you guys as well to our current standing with supporters, and for as long as this brand is going, um, I really hope that we 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 all just really have fun together, we really join together, because I want to feel it like just because we're on the other side of the mic, I want you guys to feel that you guys are enjoying these experiences with us. Because we're not, I mean, we could sit here and without the mics and headphones and have these discussions about farts, politics, <laughs> you know, uh, cats, pudding. In our lives. In our lives. And so all, all the, the medial things, all the small things and all the, um, the large things too. And it would be fine, and we'd still build that bond. But we want to do this with you guys, you know. So we hope that this really helped bring us into a place of. I hope it was a, the topic was a good mesh of serious and non-serious things. Um, to feel like after this episode, you feel like you know us somewhat, you know. Uh, and uh, we hope it builds the community, as I have here. Uh, I drew a flower, which is weird, <laughs> and uh, so everything from our content. From randomness to seriousness, um, yeah, scaling from randomness to, to, to seriousness. We hope that um, we hope that you guys really just stick with us and take this journey because without you, we can't grow right. at all. And so that's that's my thoughts on that. Um, um, hey, if you guys have any questions for us, or if you want to tell us any of your stories about, like, if you want to reflect on whatever. Um, comment down below. We we are we are very active on our comments. We respond to you uh, as you can see in our previous videos. Uh, just comment and we'll talk to you. Like we want to have a dialogue and a conversation about like whatever you're thinking about on the reflecting on your life and yeah yeah. I think it'd be great for you guys to tell us when you reflected on something and it was different than what you thought or yeah. it it had made a major impact on your life that you know where pain created wisdom in your life or put you on a good path. You know right uh, where you turn crap into. And it's something awesome, just crap sculpture of greatness or something. The crap know. sculpture of greatness. I don't know. Uh, so that's us. You guys are you. Check us out on Just Play Nonsense. Uh, go ahead, take it from here. <laughs> uh, I was actually, I'm thinking about like just cutting that whole part out because like it's, you, I mean, you know where to get us. Like we don't have to say it on every episode. Oh, what? But like all the closing out stuff oh, that yeah, I usually yeah. do. But yeah, anyway, uh, just check us out on uh, iTunes, Spotify. Yeah, YouTube and ju and our website, just play nothing. Do you want to say a thing again? I must. You're, you're no, that's fine. Okay. That's all good. Yeah. It ain't no thing but a chicken wing and a string from Burger King. Not sponsored <laughs> by Burger King. Right. So. All right. Do you got anything else you want to say? We also have triplehelix.media if you want to uh, look up some of our short stories, poems. Right. And a little bit about us as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would like to throw this in there. Um, so if you want to get, if you like getting serious with us, you know, um, check out our. Uh, triplehelix.media stuff, you know, because we, yeah, we, we hit some deep stuff. Um, 
and maintain with just play nonsense if you want to get weird with us. So, right. So now you've seen both sides of the company. It's been projected to you guys. Go enjoy what you want. All right, let's do it. Let's we'll do another one of these. Let's get weird. Bye. <laughs>